Distance learning. Today we're going to be talking about white balance. Um, white balance is how your camera figures out what color the light falling on your subject is um, so that it can render the colors of your subject in the most accurate way possible, right? In the most neutral um, way possible. So if there is sort of like bluish light falling on them, it wants to compensate for that and give you, you know, your white t-shirt still looks white. It doesn't look blue because it has blue light falling on it, right? Or if you have a, uh, you know, white dress on, right? And you walk into a room that is lit by candles. That's a very orange light. Um, you don't want your dress to look orange, right? You would like to look white. Our eyes are really, really good at this, right? Our eyes walk from one environment to the next. We don't even really notice that the light has changed color. Um, combination of like chemistry and your brains um, figured out, right? So I have a white piece of paper. I walk from one room to the next. Even if one room is lit by daylight, the other one is lit by light bulbs. I look at the white piece of paper and it's white the whole time. Um, your camera is not so good at it. So your camera, we need to tell it what color the light is so that it can do a good job of rendering the colors neutrally in the scene. Um, there are some, like you can go too far, right? You can go, you've gone too far. Um, you can go too far in like the color of something and not be able to recover from it, not be able to balance it out. Um, but most naturalish types of light, um, we can get a neutral color balance for those. Um, where are you going to run into uh, different colored lights? I already talked about candles, right? We don't shoot a lot of like candle lit things. Um, candles are very orange. Um, the uh, like daylight, right, is generally a bluer light. You know, direct sun generally fairly blue. Um, you're like, but Brad, I colored the sun in with a crayon and it was definitely yellow. Yeah, but there's a lot of light bouncing off that big dome of the sky coming down here and that's all blue. Um, so it is bluer than incandescent light, anything that has a filament burning inside it. Um, you will also get uh, light from light bulbs, right? Um, and depending on your light bulb, it will have a different color balance. So this is a light bulb uh, that is, what does it say here, 5,000K. Um, so 5,000K is 5,000 degrees Kelvin. Kelvin is how you sort of numerically quantify what color temperature something is. Um, a higher number means you're dealing with a bluer light. A lower number means you're dealing with a oranger, yellower light. So if you have a daylight balanced uh, light bulb, it is going to be a higher number like 5,000K. Um, these light bulbs right here, they say on the box, if you read it right there, uh, daylight, right? So these are daylight balanced. Um, if you buy them and put them in a room and there is sunlight coming into that room, um, the sunlight and the light bulbs will be roughly the same color. Um, more often, you get this light bulb, which looks identical in all respects, except that if I look at it here, it says 3000K. Um, on the box, it said soft white, right? Soft white, that's not a color, but it's light bulb speak for being a warmer light. Um, this is sort of the traditional color of normal light bulbs, right? If you go and like get a light bulb that has a filament in it, it's going to be around 3,000, 3,500, 3,700, something like that degrees Kelvin. So problem is these look exactly the same. So you need to either look on the light bulb, um, you need to look on the box of the light bulb. Um, that should tell you, right? Um, so by default, your average light bulb is going to be warm. Sometimes, though, it's cool. Dude, so cool, man. These light bulbs, man. Um, all right, so what do these things look like? Um, so I'm going to turn off the rest of the lights in the room so that we can just look at the light generated by this fixture. This fixture is great because I can actually turn it from a warmer tone to a cooler tone, and we can see in real time 
how that changes. The difficulty that you're going to have um, viewing the video is that the camera that is doing the filming, right, has been set to a white balance, right? So it is going to render one of these white balances as more natural than the other one. Uh, luckily, I have another camera down here that I'm going to take a picture with, and that camera we can actually change afterwards, and you'll see it pop up um, demonstrating what the differences are. So, kill these other lights. Here we have uh, this lovely scene. Um, right now, my camera is set to a tungsten incandescent, right? It's all the same thing. Tungsten's the same as incandescent. Um, incandescent and tungsten are the same as like light bulb with a filament. Um, it's that warmer 3500, 3700 temperature, uh, degrees Kelvin color temperature. Um, and because my camera is set to that and my light source is also set to that, then this looks pretty neutral. Let me go ahead and take a picture. All right, looks pretty neutral. Um, if I set my camera to daylight, right, if I tell my camera, hey, this is daylight that you're looking at, right? Not tungsten, which is what this is set to. Um, then I will get the wrong color. So there you go, right? Set it to the wrong white balance. I set it to a daylight white balance. It's expecting everything to have this bluer light. And so it compensates for that by making the picture oranger, right? Since the picture was already fairly orangey, right, because it's expecting, it's uh, being illuminated with this um, like 3500K light bulb light. Um, we took an orange picture, we added more orange, thinking we were compensating for something, and we get super, super orange image. Um, now I'm going to change this light to be daylight balanced. Right, and you can actually see, as it does it, um, how much bluer that is, right? So it hasn't gotten lighter, it hasn't gotten darker, only the color has shifted. I'll take a picture of that. Um, so now, because I had my picture taking camera, stills camera, set to daylight, right? It compensates for the bluer light and we get a neutral image. As long as what my camera is set to matches the color of the light, you'll be fine. Um, because we can make those compensations, we can say, hey, camera, be this. Hey, camera, be that. We can do that in post-production. We can say, oh, whoops, I set it to the wrong thing. I'll edit it, and now it will be the right thing. Um, uh, we did that in the Lightroom editing for this week. Um, pretty straightforward, no big deal. Um, the problem that we run into is when we have two sources of light um, and they are different colors, or our source of light is an extreme and more unusual color. So right now, um, most of the time we're dealing with stuff on a blue to orange spectrum of light. Um, if I make this light green, right, just by putting this big green piece of uh, stuff over the front of it. I'll do that and then take a picture. Um, and although, you know, um, I can work in post to try and get this more accurate, um, a, I don't have a setting on my camera that is the light is super green, try to fix it, right? I can set it to auto, right, which is what I've done, but it's still not great. And even going in in post-production and trying to correct it, um, it's not going to give me a nice neutral result the way that it will um, with a more usual white balance. Um, So that was one problem we could have, right, was that things were uh, an extreme color. The other problem is when we have a um, mixed lighting condition where I have, you know, maybe it is uh, their normalish light colors, but I have two of them, right? So I have to pick one or the other. I can't fix both. Um, common situation here, right, I have 
an interior that is lit by light bulbs, and then I have a view out a window to somewhere that is lit by the sun, right? Or I am outside, right, and it's later in the afternoon, and so I have this nice kind of like late evening bluish light outside, but I have uh, a view in the window of a house that is, you know, warm orangey glow. Um, now, that's a case where maybe it's fine, right? Maybe that's the look that I want. I want this more cinematic, like, you know, home, homey interior kind of thing. Um, and so having that warmer and having the outside um, bluer and having being unable to render both things, those things as neutral is okay. It's less okay if I'm taking a picture of a, for a catalog or whatever, and I have this nice interior and there's a window in the background because it's like Pottery Barn or I don't know what, um, and all of a sudden my inside is orange or my outside is blue. That would not be okay. Um, what we would do in that particular case, either that we would change the light color on the inside by putting gels on our light so that they match the daylight, um, or we would gel the window um, so that the window matched the interior tungsten light. You'll see this a lot with movies. They have these big giant rolls of orange film. They'll put them over uh, the windows if you're um, sort of lighting a set with daylight or whatever from the outside, um, and that way the lights on the inside of the room and that window light match. Um, but let's look, uh, let's see, turn this back to our warm light. And then I'm gonna grab my blue light bulb now. Right, I have two different lighting colors in here. Let's try and make the exposure a little bit more even, brighten this up a little bit. Um, and I'm just not gonna be able to get them to be totally neutral, right? Like that background back there, um, I'm not gonna be able to make it a totally neutral gray because this part is being lit more by this daylight bulb and that part over there is being lit more by that tungsten um, light fixture. So this is a case where there's nothing I can do to make them neutral. I have to choose one or the other. Um, so as you are shooting, try to be, um, let me just turn on uh, big lights. Um, as you're shooting, try to be conscious of what color lighting you're getting um, and try to make sure that the light is consistent throughout the scene. Some small variation is not a big deal, but if I have a subject um, that I'm taking a portrait of, I want to make sure that, you know, if I'm trying to get something neutral and normal looking, that all the light that's falling on them is roughly the same color temperature. That way I can set my white balance to one thing and be able to take a picture and have it be completely neutral. So, that's white balance. Uh, there's a PDF. Take a look at it. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy.